Hello! And welcome to a special holiday treat. I thought that uh, Knives Out would be my last review of the year, but here we are. Here with Jumanji, the next level. Wonderful to see everybody again. And right off the bat, well, we got to talk about just how happy I am. And how thankful I am that this movie is out there. I mean, I was commenting about this to a friend of mine that, you know, it could just be my nostalgia. But, like, I recall that December was primarily the time for, you know, family films. Or, you know, more upbeat fare. And yeah, every now and then there'd be, you know, an adult movie out there to... Uh, you know, for, for the parents and whatnot, but it seemed like I, I always remember December being more of a, you know, family release time. And now it seems like we get a lot of the family fare, you know, your Frozens and whatnot, in November for Thanksgiving, and December, because it's, you know, they're trying to gear up for award season, is when we get all of these, you know, art house films or all these Oscar contenders. Um, and these are films that don't necessarily help get you into the holiday spirit. I mean, I remember, I'm, I'm going to the movies and I'm seeing some of these trailers and it's damn hard to be jolly watching some of these things. I mean, what is this? You know, on the third day of Christmas, the movies gave to me three chicks suing Fox News, one Atlanta bombing, and poison in the town's water. Hard to be jolly. <laughs> So right off the bat, it's really nice to see a just fun family adventure film. You know, nothing too heavy. It, it is what it is. What you see is what you get. Um, I really enjoyed the last Jumanji film, um, unexpectedly so. And I think most people would agree with that. Uh, it was this film that when you first saw it, saw the trailers, you're like, oh, they're, they're doing a Jumanji sequel or reboot or whatever. You know, the, I was not a huge fan of the original 96 version. Just wasn't. Um, but I felt like Welcome to the Jungle did a lot of fun things with the concept. Uh, it had a great cast. And overall, it was just a very tight, lean entertaining film and I think the sequel pretty much delivers on what it promises more of that you know more of you know people in the wrong avatars and you know video game-esque adventure um, it's kind of funny to me <laughs> that uh, Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle and this one may be the best video game movies ever <laughs> when you really think about it and yet they're not based on a video game which slight sidebar before we get into this why isn't there a tie-in video game for this the first one I could understand the first one they didn't know was going to be a hit they were you know just you know throwing stuff at the wall really but this one, like, no tie-in video game, really? It seems like the marketing for that would write itself, but that's just me. You know, you do a you do a Tomb Raider, Rise of the Tomb Raider, Uncharted adventure thing where you play as The Rock, Kevin Hart, Jack Black, and Karen Gillian. I'd buy it, but I digress. So, as I said, right on the surface, this movie does what you want a Jumanji sequel to do. Of course, the, the the hook this time being that Spencer, the kid from the first one, feeling kind of disconnected from his life and, and yearning for a time when he felt he was his best self, i.e. when he was The Rock. I mean, who wouldn't rather be The Rock, let's be honest. Um, goes back into Jumanji. His friends go back in to get him. Only this time, along with them, um his grandfather played by Danny DeVito and his friend played by Danny Glover are sucked into the game and end up in the bodies of The Rock and Kevin Hart respectively. Um, so again, I want to stress before I get into nitpicks, I'm going to, I have some nitpicks I need to get into. 
about this film. Um, I want to stress that I enjoyed it. Fun movie. No, you know, my complaints are more just missed opportunities more than legitimate complaints. The only legitimate complaint I have about this one is I feel like it's a bit bloated. As I said before, the original, the original, but the last one, um, was much leaner. It felt like it was, you know, very streamlined. We didn't have a lot of, a lot of flab on it. This one, I feel, drags on a bit, and there's a couple of parts in it where you're just kind of like, okay, let's, let's get to the next bit. Um, that's the only real complaint I have about it. Everything else is just, you know, little nitpicks, but little nitpicks have kind of started getting to me after a while. Um, so let's, let's get into some of those. So, uh, let's talk about the first one, um, and that is, of course, the, the, the hook this time of The Rock and Kevin Hart basically doing their Danny DeVito and Danny Glover impersonations. Um, Kevin Hart does a really good job. Uh, he does a great Danny Glover. I mean, you could, you, you would swear if you didn't know better that actually was Danny Glover in there. Um, God bless his sweet face. <laughs> bless his sweet face and his bulging biceps and massive pectorals. Um, but The Rock is just not your quintessential thespian. I believe he knows this. I don't believe I'm insulting the man. I think he's well aware of his uh, shortcomings as a performer. Um, so asking him to try to do a... to play another famous actor is questionable. And what turns out is him just doing a really bad Brooklyn accent. And uh, it's not that it's not funny or there aren't good parts to it. It's that it, it, it you can see the stress. The Rock is at his best when he is essentially playing The Rock or a Rock-esque character. You know... And this time, he's still doing that, but, you know, I, I don't know. He, he just, it, 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 it feels much more forced this time. You put any strain on something like that, and it's going to it's gonna crack. Also, I feel like they did not do as much with that premise as they could have done. Again, their central hook is that The Rock and Kevin Hart are now embodied by two old men. And I feel like, as it is with a lot of these, some of the best lines and best interactions are in the trailer. And everything else is very, is a, kind of like the one joke of them not understanding what's going on. I mean, how many times they have to explain to them what the premise is and what's going on. And, you know, hey, huh? hey, it's like, okay, it's not, it's not funny anymore, guys. You know, I... I also think that they, they weighed the story down a bit too much. It's weird complaining about the story in a movie like this. Um, but I feel like they weighed the, the story down a little bit too much. The first one had, again, very streamlined story. Very Breakfast Club. Four kids what don't get along, forced to coexist, and become best friends. Simple. This one, you've got Spencer having his, you know, 20s life crisis... And you've got Danny DeVito and Danny Glover who were friends but had a falling out and now they're trying to patch it up because you could probably guess why suddenly they'd be trying to patch up a friendship because they're old. So you could probably guess where this is going. Um, and I don't think the movie needed that. I think you could have had just as much fun if Danny DeVito and Danny Glover's characters were still friends and they were just two old men kind of enjoying being young and healthy again. You know, I, I don't think it needed the added conflict except for people like watching The Rock and Kevin Hart fight. Um, and again, I just don't think it needed it. Um, weighed it down a little bit. Um, Karen Gillian is uh, great again, but uh, not 
not really given a whole lot to do. She's more the den mother or the nurse this time, trying to keep the old guys in line. And I don't think it's the best use of her, uh, of that character, or of her as an actor. You know, uh, again, it's not bad. It's just I don't think she's given as much as much to chew on as she had in the first one. Um, still, you got to admire Karen Gillian just as an actor and kind of the breakout role she's been having lately. But here's a here's a, a quibble I have. Small quibble, but a quibble. Why won't they just let her use her accent in this movie? It makes no sense to me. You have an actor with, pardon me, but an extremely sexy accent. And you make her speak with an American one the whole time. I understand it in Guardians of the Galaxy, but this film, it's the same question I have of why they don't let Benedict Cumberbatch use his accent. Why can't Doctor Strange be British? Why did they have him do the voice of the Grinch and not use that incredible voice he's got? You know, why? I don't I don't understand it. it that little nitpicks to me, but it's something that always bugs me with her and, and Benedict Cumberbatch. Why they don't let them use their, their natural voices. Um... I know that The Rock and Kevin Hart are kind of the top billing here. It's what always gets people, you know, their names are the ones on the seats. Dwayne Johnson produced the thing. So, but I, I honestly believe for both these movies, these movies belong to Jack Black. Like, these are his films. Um, he is the highlight of both of them. And he is really, he is turning it up in this one. And this is coming from somebody who honestly was not a fan of Jack Black at, at, in his heyday, you know, when he was, you know, the big, the big comedian, uh, around and, you know, he was doing all the movies. I was not a fan, but I, I gotta say, I thought he was hysterical in the first one playing Bethany and he's hysterical here playing Fridge, the African-American friend who gets sucked into all this. Um, and that's the one you really got to be careful of, because it's real easy for a white guy pretending to be a black guy to go from performance into parody into offensive. You know, I think it's real easy to do that. Um, but he never, I don't think he even gets up to the line as far as I'm concerned. As you know, and I'm coming from, you know, my perspective, but I, I can tell you, the the two African Americans sitting down from us in the movies were laughing at it. So I don't think they found it offensive. Um, but man, he is just so good, and he really shows off uh, just how talented he really is. Kind of almost in a uh, in a John C. Riley way. You know what else this movie does is it reminds you how good Danny DeVito is. I think a lot of people forget how good of an actor Danny DeVito really is. And even in just kind of a bookending role, he's got some lines and some deliveries and stuff that it's just, you forget how funny he is and you forget just how good he really is as a performer. So it's always good to see Danny DeVito around. Danny Glover, who I love, I love Danny. I feel like he gets the short end of the stick here. He has... He, he's in the first part of the film, but he doesn't do much. So it's like, why'd you pay Danny Glover money? Aside from giving Kevin Hart someone very specific to imitate. Um, which I guess that answers my question when you think about it. Uh, the other thing about this one, kind of going back to the story, is so, so you have the two concurring stories of Spencer and his college life crisis and, you know, the two old guys. I've talked about the two old guys. Um, I feel like they missed uh, an interesting opportunity here because I thought what was going to happen when they didn't show you who Spencer was going to be inhabiting in the uh, uh, in the in the trailers, you know, whose avatar he was going to have. Um, I thought they might be going for something really interesting, and, and when they get to Jumanji, you know, they find out he's in the body of the villain. 
And I thought that would actually have been a really cool twist. You know, they go in to rescue him and they find out he's he's the bad guy. And then they got to do a, you know, a, a Vader resurrection, you know, and bring him back to the light through the power of friendship and love kind of thing. You know, I thought that would have been interesting. And, and they didn't do that. They went, the option they went with was fine. Um, and maybe I'm overthinking what, again, is meant to be a, a family holiday adventure film. You know, just go and watch and have a good time and don't, you know, bring anything else really into it. But, I don't know, I felt like the first, the, the last Jumanji film did, had a lot of fun with the premise and did some neat things and that's what made it memorable. And this film... I feel it just suffers from a little bit of sequelitis in that it's more of the same. And again, that's not bad, really. It's not bad. It's, the film's entertaining. The, uh, the, uh, the adventure parts are really fun. There's some good acting, some good comedy going on. You know, it, it, it delivers on what it promises. I'm just saying that I think they missed a couple opportunities to have more fun with the premise again instead of kind of giving us the same premise just more of it you know what I mean uh just me but uh but all in all I I had a good time with this movie it was fun uh again best video game movies uh, ever, I think, these two. Uh, which is, again, funny, because they're not actually based on video games. Um, they, they do some heavy, heavy, heavy sequel baiting in this one. Um, so, I'm kind of interested to see what they do with it going forward. Uh, I, you know, I don't, I'm not going to spoil anything, uh, but it feels like I think they're going to try to do what happens when you bring those avatars into the real world kind of thing, if they do a third one. Uh, I think these movies can be counted on so far to be pretty solid, pretty enjoyable, family fair, and again, given the other things that are being released, uh, I, I don't think that is a bad thing yeah, at all. <laughs> so, you know, if you dug uh, Welcome to the Jungle, you'll dig this one, I think. Um, so yeah, I think that's about, that's about it for me. Um, final grade, which is ironic because I'm driving to work to give finals. So semester finals. So it's, it's, you know, serendipitous that I'm now giving a final grade to Jumanji. Uh, so final grade for Jumanji, uh, the next level, I'm going to go a B minus. Still a lot of fun. Uh, the cast, the cast clearly is having a ball. Uh, that's something I didn't cover, but the cla the cast is clearly digging doing these movies because you can tell, like I say, Jack Black, especially Karen Gillian, The Rock, Kevin Hart, they're all just having a lot of fun being there and doing it. And I think that comes across on, on screen and it helps make the movie even more enjoyable. So they're having fun. You're having fun couple of things I would have done different, but those are not deal breakers. So B minus on this one. Good holiday fare. Um, check it out. You know, have some popcorn and have a good time. All right. So that is, that is it for me. Uh, at least for this one. I, there's one more film I'm hoping to get to before the new year. Don't, I, I will get to Star Wars, but that's always a after New Year's type thing. Um, but there is one other film that I'm hoping to get to. We'll see if I, if I'm able to, um, but, uh, you know, you know, what's funny like a bunny is that some films you go to and you just want to you want to see how good they are and some films you want to go to because you want to watch the train wreck and that's what we're hoping to get to uh, a little bit later but if I don't get to that till New Year's once again let me wish everyone out there 
the very best, the very happiest of holidays, whatever it is you celebrate, um, and the very happiest of New Year's. And for drive home reviews for myself, uh, we will see you, if not before the New Year, I will definitely see you after it. So to all, uh, to all a good night. As always, drive safe, and I'll see you at the movies.